Tyler Boyd. Few players have had an NFL career filled with such a dramatic turnaround, yet also one that simultaneously goes as unheralded. Back in the 2016 offseason, the Cincinnati Bengals needed wide receiver help. A.J. Green was in his prime, but both Marvin Jones and Mohamed Sanu elected to bolt for big free agent contracts after the rookie ones expired. As a remedy for the situation, Cincinnati signed veteran Brandon LaFell in free agency, as well as opting for talent in the draft. The Bengals snagged Boyd in the second round that year with pick number 55. Coming out of the University of Pittsburgh, Boyd was a do-it-all player for the Panthers. Ultimately, though, it was his uber-reliable hands, crisp route running, and Steel City tough-as-nails approach that had the Bengals highly interested. Oddly enough, Boyd grew up a Steelers fan and had to adjust being on Pittsburgh's rival, playing them twice a year, every year, as a Bengals wide receiver. Talk a little bit about that dichotomy, I guess, of emotions, playing against your hometown team, but one of their biggest rivals twice a year. Yeah, right. Uh, that was, it was just a crazy feeling knowing that I was getting drafted by the Bengals, you know, knowing I'm from Pittsburgh. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's fun to me when I when I get to go home and, or, or play the Steelers, you know, because I know all of those guys. I've been around them because I was at Pitt. And even even though, like, the games are, like, physical, like, it still, like, brings joy to me that I get to play against my hometown team. You know what I'm saying? Plus, playing in the stadium, I kind of feel like, it's a home game for me, and all the fans are still supporting me, and things like that, you know, but um, it's, it's hard because that's the only team that I didn't beat yet, you know what I'm saying, so I, it, I, I would love to beat them. In 2016, things went pretty well for Boyd as a rookie. As the team's third wide receiver and often slot option, he finished with 54 catches for 603 yards and a touchdown. He was seemingly poised for a breakout second season. But as they often do in the NFL, things can change in an instant. Boyd wasn't targeted much at the beginning of the 2017 season and then suffered a knee injury that lingered throughout the year. He admitted playing through that injury when he was on the Orange and Black Insider back in early 2019 when we caught up with him. Well, going back towards my, going back to my second year when I had got hurt with the same injury I'm dealing with now, um, it was, it was it's pretty much a, a, a next man up league. As it was with a fair share of young players for the better part of 16 seasons, Boyd found himself in Marvin Lewis's doghouse during his second year and had trouble getting out of it. Until one play changed everything. Not only did Tyler Boyd become a name etched in Buffalo Bills fan lore forever, but it earmarked a fork in his career path. Boyd took that game-winning touchdown versus the Ravens in a lost season for the Bengals and parlayed it into becoming one of the best slot receivers in the NFL, as well as a Cincinnati locker room leader. You know, so once um, I was ready and healthy to come back and play, they already had the ball rolling with the guys that we had, you know, and... um. I couldn't be upset with that. I had to just uh, continue to work and just uh, do everything I could to get back out there and, and wait for another opportunity, you know. And, and I finished strong the last three games. Once I start uh, getting back into my original role, what I was doing my rookie year, and then I started making big plays and plays that were that, that was crucial. And the, the, the play that uh, really, really made it for me was the Ravens game, the last game of the year. And uh, ever since then, I just had that 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 mindset to continue to, to keep that focus, you know, continue to to work out the next day and, and just, just try to uh, critique myself in, in ways where I feel like I'm weak at, you know, and I think I came in very strong and 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 and, and uh, came in better in every area of, of my game. And all I needed was for them to give me another opportunity. I'm just going to, you know, take full advantage of it. The following season, Boyd finished with his first 1,000-yard receiving campaign, only to do it again in 2019. 
Whether it was Andy Dalton, Jeff Driscoll, or Ryan Finley throwing him passes during 2018 and 2019, Boyd showed the ability to be productive despite instability at the position. And if you weren't thinking Boyd was in legendary territory already with the Bengals after the Ravens touchdown grab, maybe the heroics against the Dolphins at the end of 2019 put him there. Note the team's record at the time of this play, by the way. When Zach Taylor took over as head coach in 2019, he slowly began scraping off the roster remnants from the Lewis regime. By the time the 2021 season rolled around, Boyd was just one of a small handful of player holdovers from the previous head coach. Uh, if Zach Taylor is the hire, you gotta be excited about what he brings. Uh, definitely, you know, because um, with the Rams, uh, the receivers are great over there, you know, and uh, real fast, real good, and do everything great. But I think the difference with uh, Coach coming in and coaching me and AJ, we got length. You know, we're taller mm -hmm. guys and, and sail fast and can catch and more mobile, you know, so I think that's going to be the extra edge of his scheme, you know, going to be a lot more easier for um, all the guys in the offense to go off, you know, plus we have a, a dominant tight end as well. You know, so it's just, we got range, you know, every guy around is tall, you know, and, and the test rate is just unbelievable, you know, so I just think we got that extra element. Taylor knew what he meant to his teammates on the field and in the locker room. Then the Joe Burrow era was ushered in. Unfortunately, his inaugural campaign was ended prematurely because of an injury, but Boyd solidified his stance as one of the league's consistent performers with yet another backup quarterback at the helm to finish the year the third time in his many past seasons. Going into 2021, Boyd hadn't experienced a winning season in the pros, much less a playoff berth or even a postseason win. Seasons with just two, six, or seven wins never deterred him from giving it his all on the field. His grit, patience, hard work, and skill set would all coalesce once again, but this time, they became a major facet to the Bengals' Super Bowl run. Along his fourth straight outstanding campaign, Boyd was a team leader and relished putting a pounding on his hometown Steelers in the regular season. Twice. The thing about that win was not only did the Steelers feel that, everybody in the country felt it because the last plays of the game for them, they gave up. You could see it, they had three drops on the rope. And that's for a team to see that is giving us more power, giving us the, the 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 antidote to know how good we are, you know. So for a team to just lay down like that when the, before the game is over, because no matter what, no matter how much we're losing by or whatever the case may be, I know me and I know us. We're not giving up. We're gonna continue to try to make plays and make something happen. But they portrayed it to to the whole uh, nation on TV with what, what they were about and how they gave up. So. I mean, we just got to take advantage. Now, entering his seventh season, Boyd has been quietly inching his way up the franchise receiving books. He's also trying to get his young team back to the big dance and hopefully lead them to a Lombardi trophy. He's quietly earned PFF accolades and done a lot of dirty work many NFL receivers shy away from. I guess that instilled facet is the one thing the Queen City can actually thank Pittsburgh for big level.